It's become an accepted part of our culture today to believe that we're all destined to do something extraordinary. Celebrities say it, business tycoons say it, politicians say it, even Oprah says it. Each and every one of us can be extraordinary. We all deserve greatness. The fact that this statement is inherently contradictory, after all, if everyone were extraordinary, then by definition, no one would be extraordinary, is missed by most people. And instead of questioning what we actually deserve or don't deserve, we eat the message up and ask for more. Being average has become the new standard of failure. The worst thing you can be is in the middle of the pack, the middle of the bell curve. When a culture's standard of success is to be extraordinary, it then becomes better to be at the extreme low end of the bell curve than to be in the middle. Because there, at least you're still special and deserve some extra attention. Many people choose this strategy to prove to everyone that they're the most miserable or the most oppressed or the most victimized. A lot of people are afraid to accept mediocrity because they believe if they accept it, they'll never achieve anything, never improve, and their life won't matter. This sort of thinking is dangerous. Once you accept the premise that a life is worthwhile only if it is truly notable and great, then you basically accept the fact that most of the human population, including yourself, sucks and is worthless. And this mindset can quickly turn dangerous to both yourself and others. The rare people who do become truly exceptional at something do so not because they believe that they are truly exceptional. On the contrary, they become amazing because they are obsessed with self-improvement. And that obsession with improvement comes from an unerring belief that they are, in fact, not that great at all. It's anti-entitlement. People who become great at something become great because they understand that they're not already great. They're mediocre, they're average, and that they could be so much better. All of this, every person can become extraordinary and achieve greatness stuff is basically just jerking off your ego. It's a message that tastes good going down, but in reality is nothing more than empty calories that makes you emotionally fat and bloated. The proverbial Big Mac for your heart and your brain. The ticket of emotional health, like that to physical health, comes from eating your veggies. That is, accepting the bland and mundane truths of life. Truths such as, your actions don't really matter in the grand scheme of things, and the vast majority of your life will be boring and not noteworthy. And that's okay. This vegetable course will taste bad at first. Very bad. You will avoid accepting it. But once ingested, your body will wake up feeling more potent and more alive. After all, that constant pressure to be something amazing, to be the next big thing, will be lifted off of your back. The stress and anxiety of always feeling inadequate and constantly needing to prove yourself will dissipate. And the knowledge and acceptance of your own mundane existence will actually free you to accomplish what you truly wish to accomplish without judgment or lofty expectations. You'll have a growing appreciation for life's basic experiences, the pleasures of simple friendship, creating something, helping a person in need, reading a good book, laughing with someone you care about. Sounds boring, doesn't it? That's because these things are ordinary, but maybe they're ordinary for a reason, because they're what actually matters.